Archetypes are something even people who don't really play fighting games generally have a rough understanding of. Even if you're not well versed enough to know about Shotos, it's likely that you understand the more commonly talked about Grappler or Zoner. But as surprise to no one, there's a lot more than just three archetypes in fighting games, and in this series, I want to talk about the ones that people ignore, how they're played, why you might play them, and perhaps most valuable to you at home, how to play against them. Starting this series off, I want to use a personal favourite of mine that doesn't get any discussion in the community at large, the Midranger. The Midranger has many forms, but by far the most common is the Swordie. Even in games like Street Fighter, where characters almost exclusively use their fists, there tends to be a baton, staff or claw out there somewhere to give someone perhaps the best midrange in the game. To make up for the long pokes of this archetype, almost always one of two things about them is appalling. Absolutely horrific startup or terrible recovery, which are generally the worst possible downsides to have in a fighting game. The upside, however, is pretty simple. It's range. With their good range, the midranger plays a constant revolving guessing game between getting themselves in and keeping you out, and in almost all cases, the keeping out is the better of the two, which makes these guys extremely deadly against the biggest villains of the FGC, grapplers. So why pick a midranger? Generally, these players aren't so good at, or aren't particularly interested in, pressure and mix-ups, and they want to rely on sturdy fundamentals and correct decision making to win. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that these characters are inherently honest, or that they do not have good pressure or mix-ups. There's a general balancing issues with these characters that often lands them above the Shoto on tier lists, because their downsides aren't severe enough, or their mix-ups are too potent. But generally, this archetype has a gravitational pull that sucks in anyone who wants to focus on reacting, while also not being forced to deal with the character's rushdown pressure or mix-ups and set play. Quite literally, their goal is to keep the opponent at a sword's length away. They're sort of like zoners if they weren't particularly interested in keeping the full screen the whole game, and instead they force you to stay roughly around round start distance, if not a little bit closer than that. So how do you play a midranger effectively? Well first off, you want an extremely good grasp of your game's universal mechanics. If you can parry, roll, focus attack, Roman cancel, dash, air dash, safe jump. Midrangers often rely heavily on universal mechanics to both create pressure and escape it. With awful startup on their moves, it can be difficult to escape pressure on their own, and similarly with their very straightforward and generally reactable moves, universal mechanics will have to be necessary to create their mix-ups for them. Whether that means horrific double or triple overheads, a good understanding of pushback from barrier blocking, or just using universal armour to beat some of your opponent's more frequently used options. But weirdly enough, spacing isn't actually as key to this playstyle as you might think, or at least their spacing isn't. Your main go-to as a midranger is calling out an approach or a poke 9 times out of 10. Even a lot of midrange characters who have great long range get in attacks use them to quickly bamboozle someone who started dashing toward them, rather than strictly for their own approaches. But of course, both use cases are valid and that tends to be the core strength of a midranger, their own flexibility. In any game, they tend to have great anti-zoning, good options full screen to either get in or force the opponent to approach, and notably good anti-air, which is often some of the best in the game. So how do you do to beat a midranger? The answer, honestly, is just in the name. You either stay close range or stay far away. While they do have tools to use as get off me's or as gap closers or anti-zoning, it tends to be they only have one applicable tool for that situation, which often means you can just be wary of this option and bait it out. And as was mentioned at the very start of this video, you can quickly turn the tide in your favour by taking advantage of either their terrible startup or terrible recovery. While the playstyle of the midranger is very flexible and fluid when the matchup's going their way, turning their tide can make their options very rigid and one-dimensional. Punishing a wake-up DP is one of the most highly damaging things that you can do in just about any fighting game, and it only takes doing it once or twice to either close that option off entirely or to just outright win the round. And same goes for their full screen options or anti-zoning tools. Because of how bad the recovery is on these extremely committal options, you can often go for a completely optimal combo to punish their attempt at dealing with your game plan. 
While the midranger may be able to cover up most of their own gaps with their very utility focused toolkit, the gaps that they cannot cover often lead to the maximum possible damage, making them very fragile if you're consistently baiting out the most committal of their options. If you're playing modern fighting games, they tend a lot more towards awful startup rather than the bad recovery end of the deal, which gives short range characters a huge boon when simply mashing against midrangers, or in general, a very high reward for anyone who's focusing on playing preemptively rather than proactively. Catching someone in startup isn't too difficult as long as you aren't playing online while connected to your neighbor's Wi-Fi. So often, just playing to overwhelm the midranger can mean a very easy game, as long as you're aware of whatever reversal options they have for your gaps if you aren't just successfully schmixing them into oblivion. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope that this episode gave you a good idea of what this video series will be and that it taught you something about a series of characters we don't often see wider discussion on. Coming soon are videos on the RNG heavy item character archetype and the midranger's much more annoying nephew, the bully character, alongside a few more super secret archetypes that I haven't even started script writing for yet. Have any ideas for archetypes that you'd like me to cover, or just some things that I missed about midrangers or a neutral skill that you'd like me to talk about? Leave a comment below and I'll get back to you ASAP, because I both love teaching people about this genre and have nothing better to do. Whether you want to see an archetype that you're curious about covered or you're interested in future content, liking and subscribing to the channel would be seriously appreciated. You can also catch me streaming on Twitch, and you can join my Discord or follow me on Twitter for updates on new videos and hear about streams just as they happen. With that, that's going to be all for this video, and as always, I'll leave you all by saying, stay safe.